Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. Today, we have a special coffee with my dear friend, Rama. Have you presented a paper or a poster at a conference? Have you defended your PhD dissertation? Because on each of those occasions, you were teaching other people about your research. Actually, I'm in France and Rama is in India. And we've met back in the US when we were both postdoc. Rama has got back to India and he has landed on a professor job. And he is now a full-time engineering professor back in India. Today, I'm privileged to be able to interview him because I think one of the most challenging part of transitioning from postdoc to professorship is that you're starting to be a teacher and you have to think of yourself as a professor as well as a teacher in the lecture room. So let me hit pause here and show you this is something I've never understood. In PhD, we do mostly research. Maybe 20% of our time goes to teaching and grading as an assistant role of teaching. Most of the funding do not give you any teaching experience. And all of a sudden, after postdoc, we are expected to apply as a professor let me say 50% of research and then 120% of teaching full courses. Can we prepare better? I hope this video addresses this scary gap of knowledge. A lot of us do not get the training to be a teacher and we are delivering teaching as a professor if we get the job. So I really hope this is going to give you more food for thought if you want to be a professor. Today, I hope Rama can give us a few tips that is helpful for those who are interested in jumping start their academic professor career. I think you will enjoy this conversation today. Rama, first of all, I'd like to ask, right now your job involves a lot of teaching. Can you share about your journey of learning how to teach? Did you learn it in PhD or postdoc training? I had experience teaching undergraduate lab courses during both my master's and PhD at Clemson University. And towards the end of my postdoc, my colleague and I were asked to team teach a course for a senior faculty member who had taken seriously ill. So that semester long assignment was my first ever classroom course. Since then, I was one of the mentors for a senior year capstone design project at Clemson. And then I've been teaching in the classroom full time and my current job. So what are the resources that you have found useful in improving your teaching? I used to subscribe to the teaching professor while I was at Clemson. Since returning to India, I've continued to subscribe to two other newsletters, Faculty Focus and Tomorrow's Professor. And of course, it always helps to share a little experience with people around you and ask, what do you think? So now you are teaching day by day. What are some of the most important tips that you always remind yourself when you are teaching in the lecture? Well, first thing, because they are, after all, undergraduate students, Regard them as adult citizens in training. Doesn't hurt to remind them early on of how much responsibility they're being trusted with, not least by being told when it comes time to vote in an election, your vote counts for the same as anybody else's. And so say, you're going to treat them accordingly, not like children. And the next thing, your first purpose is to help them to learn. You can't learn for them any more than you can eat or exercise for someone else. But focus on that. And after that comes telling others what has been learned or how much has been learned, which end of the day is the real purpose of a grade in the course. The third thing is you'll have to be patient. Some things that may seem perfectly obvious to you, whether about the subject or about work in general, may not be so obvious to your students, but then you can't expect them to understand what you understand now. You should always ask just how much did you understand when you were a student? So there you are.
It strikes me that the grading part of the teaching as a part of teaching because that's something I have never considered. Could you elaborate a little more? Like I, I understand teaching is I go into the room and I teach the subject, but it strikes me now when you say about the part of grading, do you have anything to add about what is the best way to grade? So here it is. What does it take to get a grade? You have to do well on tests. You have to do well on the exam and you have to do well on any other internal assessment. Now, we all know how people are there to teach us to ace the standardized test by saying, these are the kinds of questions you can expect and this is how you need to answer them. And sometimes when you know what the subject is all about, well, these are the questions that one could reasonably ask in this subject. And depending on how you frame your questions, you could either be encouraging them to simply memorize a few things from their books and notes and repeat all that, or you could be encouraging them to think a little more deeply. But always remember, there are some things that you might miss out from this test. To give just one example, the way the assessment is generally structured, it rewards ability to read well. Well, what if somebody is dyslexic? It rewards ability to use pen, pencil, paper, and all that sort of thing. Well, what if somebody is much better at working with their hands? Sometimes people have a bad semester for reasons not really their fault or have bad days on the test for reasons not their fault. So without demeaning anyone's efforts, you should always take those results with a grain of salt. Wow. That really tells me you have the heart of a teacher, Rama. So we all know that PhD and postdoc are mostly science and research driven positions. For those people who are interviewing for assistant professor jobs, they have to write a teaching statement and they have to showcase the teaching experience. Do you have any suggestion for people who might not have that formal lecturing experience that you have had? What are your advice for them to stand up for that teaching role and make a case that they can be a good professor? First of all, consider have you ever presented a research proposal? Have you presented a paper or a poster at a conference? Have you defended your PhD dissertation? Because on each of those occasions, you were teaching other people about your research. It's not always the case that your whole dissertation committee knows all about what you did. And when you're at a conference, it's definitely the case that most people don't know what you've done. And when you think about it, what is it you're saying? You're asking yourself what the other person can reasonably be expected to know and what you want that person to learn and how you can convey that clearly and concisely and get the person interested. Some of that you can certainly take to the classroom. Sure, it's a very different audience, but the basic thoughts are much the same. If you have teaching experience, it's a good idea to sit back and think about what you did and why you did it and what seemed to help students learn and what seemed not to help. And from all that, what is it you have learned? If teaching in the classroom is going to be entirely new, ask yourself, go back to the time when you were an undergraduate student. Think about what you needed at that time and why and how. And then ask yourself, well, if you were the teacher instead, how would you try to satisfy those needs? That can form the start of a teaching statement. So there's a lot more you can say about that, but let's take that for a start. In the US, it's common practice for us to have grading assistance, right? So here we don't have grading assistance. We have to grade the test and exam papers on our own. Mm -hmm. Now, on the one hand, you understand why they have grading assistance because it takes so much time and effort to do. On the other hand, on the other hand, you can see for yourself without saying to the assistant, well, what did you notice? You can see for yourself who's understanding what. And if a lot of people are making the same mistake, you can stop and say, well, maybe I didn't teach this properly. I will say there is uh, quite the move, just like there is in the US to saying, well, 
there are ways besides the lecture textbook system not that we need to give up either of those for the lecture textbook system has been in vogue in india just like it has been in vogue in the us there is increasing interest in trying other methods not to replace the existing system entirely but to complement it and yes this is very much a work in progress it remains to be seen how this is all going to work maybe we can have some combination of the approaches we have been using for a long time and shall we say new approaches as you know the pandemic has forced us to teach over the internet for better or for worse so <laughs> it does uh, become a problem when you can't see your students you just have to rely on what they say to you or what they write to you mm. but all you can say is do the best you can under the circumstances well this gives us a lot to think about and i resonate with not being able to see the audience as i produce videos on youtube and i also can't really know if they are well taken or if people found it valuable until they write to me So I hope I take this opportunity that you guys who are watching please write to Rama in the comments below and let him know if this is helpful to you when you are preparing for your teaching statement and if this helps you to become a better professor if you are already teaching and if this conversation helps you to think of yourself as a teacher. So thank you Rama today for joining us. I think this is a very nice coffee break that I wish I had when I was back in trying to prepare for faculty packages but i hope this is going to be valuable to many of you out there thank you do i need to record anything again from what i have just said did i do well you know in my experience you learn that after you edit the video <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> all right i'll stop the recording <laughs>